We could have dug our head in the, in, in the sand and we could let China outstretch us by 40 million, you know, to our, like, you know, we're, we're less than a million uh, installs. That number is rapidly changing every single day. But when you compare it to countries like Germany that have quite a few million, they're actually the, one, the, the largest at this point uh, solar uh, user in, in Europe in Europe, in all of Europe. I think Spain, France comes next, and then Spain. What you should know is, is that the only way to really make the difference is with government uh, assistance. Uh, but bear this in mind, just like what you said, is that what the government will do is the same that's happening in France. France is getting 3,000 applications a day for solar installs. 3,000 a day. That might not sound like a whole lot, but if you can imagine, you know, 3,000 people, this, this was actually uh, after they put a restriction on how many people that could apply a day. Is that residential and commercial? They've got it all in one. I don't know if they've broken it out, but what's happening is, is that the incentives are so good, and they call it feed and tariff, where you, let's say you purchase your electric conventionally at one rate, but you get double that rate if you're selling your solar. What the government does is locks whatever that doubled rate in. This is what you want to know. You don't want the you don't want like everybody like gas. Whenever you know it spikes or drops, falls, they lock it in for ten years. They've had, in France, they've had so many people to apply for these units until they've had to actually put a moratorium. IBM, when they just call computers IBM computers, just IBM, IBM compatible. Well, I was building them back during those days, 486s, 386s, 286s. You remember 286s? I had 286. Did you? That was my first unit. I took it apart. I didn't know how to put it back together, and I sweated until I figured it out. And at that point, everybody wanted to buy them, so I would put it together. And then, and then in a few short years, I would make five hundred dollars for putting the computer together. You buy it, and I'd make profit five hundred dollars. Within two short years, my profit went to eighty dollars per machine. You know how why that happened? Competition. Competition and mass production. <laughs> and I'm like. Damn, man, I thought I'd be king forever. <laughs> I, was ready to, I was ready to clone myself. <laughs> right? This industry feels like that one, along with, remember Microsoft? Like before Microsoft? Remember DOS, operating system? I know you remember DOS. Remember DOS? Yes, it's operating system. Right, yeah. 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 this operating system. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, Microsoft came online and basically took over that operating system. Mm -hmm. And it, now it's still there, if you know how to use it. Yeah. But Microsoft, you know, when you say, what's your operating system? You say Microsoft, Linux, yeah. you, you run it, run, you know, but Microsoft basically you look at it as an operating system. Mm -hmm. It really isn't, but it takes mm -hmm. over your computer. In a few short years that happened. How did that happen? That's without <laughs> government regulation. That's without government subsidies. All of that happened. These industry, internet. You remember when internet really first? Remember when they used to call it internet super highway? Yeah. That's way before it even came in. They used to say it's coming. The politicians, the internet super, and the people were like, "What the hell? You act like you knew something." You know, you're like, "The information super highway is coming." Well, what the heck was it? Nobody really knew except for if you knew what it was. Now, the government knew because the internet basically was uh, the Defense Department, baby. That was actually designed and developed for colleges and to connect educational divisions together like pods. Then the Defense Department was looking at it like their biggest assignment was if anything happened in Washington and all the arms and legs were cut off, how would you connect the net? It's not a matter of, of, of whether it's going to happen. It's like exactly when is it going to happen? When is it going to flip? And the question is, like for sales, it's really the greatest time. You know, because for legislation, it's the greatest time. It's like the Wild West. That's how I see it. 
It's like, you know, there's the wild, wild west. You know, this couple is it just starting up overnight. You know, the guy doesn't know anything about it, but he'll learn. The <laughs> oil industry has not, has, has not been our friend in the renew for, for renewables. They have not looked kindly on the expansion of renewables. And, you know, the, their job has been, you know, quite simply to lobby for more oil. You know, I mean, it, 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 it would be great if we had friends and, 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 and set of enemies, but the fact of the matter is, when you see, like with solar hot, hot water and the, and the large systems that they're doing for large commercial running huge industries with parabolic units, units that actually can, can heat water at thousands uh, of degrees, uh, we can see the potential in just you know small farms, you know that run turbines, that run you know whole cities or portions of the city, and we've calculated this out and we know that it's possible to do. So the question is, why aren't we doing it? You know, well some places are. China is actually building one of the one of the largest one of these systems that's going to be driving you know a huge factory all completely driven by turbine, all completely uh, with the sun. So it's not whether that technology is there, it's whether there's, you're, you're, you're right in the sense of our government needing to constantly across the board to have a study understanding, but that would actually mean that, um, that we have some, some say in what happens with big oil, right? Because at this point, it, it, it's, Big oil controls the, the purse strength, but if they completely controlled it, then even in this presidency, they would be controlling the dialogue. Yeah. And they're trying, of course, but it is a more global dialogue now than it ever was. And big oil can't control that. 